Today we have an iPhone 13 mini that was sent to us by another repair shop. According to their technician, the device has no power. The first step we'll take is to remove the motherboard from the housing and connect it directly to the power supply. As soon as we connect the phone, there's a current draw of 4.026 amps, indicating a short circuit on one of the primary lines. Next, we'll remove the 5G antenna from the motherboard and place the board on the preheater to separate the lower and upper layers. We've set the temperature to 220 degrees Celsius. Once the phone reaches the right temperature, we separate the two layers. Here are the two boards. Our next step is to connect the upper board to the power supply and check for any current draw. If there is a current draw, it means the short is in the upper layer. If there isn't, the short is in the lower layer. As you can see, the upper layer isn't drawing any current, which means the short is in the lower board. This lower board contains most of the components related to connectivity, such as Wi-Fi and signal, which is why it's called the RF motherboard. RF stands for radio frequency. Now, we'll use software to identify all the components attached to the primary line. We use a multimeter in diode mode to check for short circuits, but don't find anything. Afterward, we clean all the traces connecting the two boards and reconnect them with this tool to see if the short is gone. We thought that maybe two traces were touching due to water damage or impact on the phone. However, when we connected the two boards to the power supply, the short was still present. At this point, we had to think outside the box to avoid wasting hours on this repair. We decided to use painter's tape to cover certain sections of the traces on the lower board, hoping to isolate the area with the short that was preventing the phone from powering on. We covered the first section, but the short remained. We tried this method several times without success. until we covered the bottom left corner of the traces. Suddenly, the short was gone, and the power supply was no longer drawing any current, zero amps. Now we knew the short was located in this area. Our next task was to compare the diode readings to the ones in the software. We discovered that four traces connected to the primary line were shorted to ground. We were getting closer to our target. The problem, however, was that the software highlighted everything connected to the main line, but didn't show us exactly where those four traces were going. We had already tested most of the components on the lower layer without finding any issues. What if these lines were connected directly to an IC, integrated circuit? or another area where we couldn't test with our multimeter or thermal camera. We tested for shorts one last time, just in case we missed something, but still found nothing. So we decided to inject voltage directly into the line and use freezer spray, but no luck. We tried again with the thermal camera, but nothing stood out. Next, we removed the metal shield covering the transceiver to see if the short was in that area, but again, no luck. Then we noticed another metal shield at the bottom of the RF board. We removed it and tested again. Finally, we found a capacitor shorted to ground, meaning the traces were connected to this area of the motherboard. We were getting closer. We injected voltage and applied freezer spray, but the only thing heating up was the IC, though not as quickly as components drawing a large current typically do. So we kept looking. Giving up wasn't an option. This was no longer just a repair. It had become a challenge. Next, we checked the software and found other components attached to the primary line under the SIM reader. This had to be it. It was the only area we hadn't tested yet. We applied heat to the back of the motherboard and removed the SIM card reader.
To our surprise, this area showed signs of water damage and corrosion. This was where the problem was located. The circuits affected were circuits related to signal, which helped connect the phone to cell towers. Many of these components are attached to the primary line, and that line ran through these four traces. If we were to disable or cover those traces, these components wouldn't receive the voltage supplied by the primary line, and the phone would power on, but it would have signal issues. So we cleaned the area with alcohol and a brush, removed all the affected components, and disposed of them. We clean the old solder from the traces with heat and solder wick and install new components. Ready to master the art of cell phone repair? Join Cell Phone Repair Academy and gain the skills needed to tackle repairs just like this one. Visit CellPhoneRepairAcademy.com today. After replacing every corroded component, we place the board in the ultrasonic cleaner to ensure any remaining corrosion, invisible to the naked eye, was removed. We then reinstalled the SIM reader and the metal shield. Finally, we conducted a test by connecting the motherboard, screen, and power button to the power supply. It wasn't showing any current draw, the short was gone. We powered on the phone, and it booted up successfully. However, there was a line on the screen, but the technician who sent the phone to us said they would replace it. Our goal was to get the motherboard working again, and now it is fully functional. Next, we reballed the lower layer, placed it back on the preheater, attached the two boards, reinstalled the 5G antenna, assembled the phone, and completed the repair. Thank you for watching.